UK wages grew by 7.8% between April and June, marking a record growth rate since 2011. That's according to new figures from the ONS. But this comes as UK unemployment is also on the up, rising to 4.2% in the three months to June. So Liam Halligan is in our studio now. So people would hear wages have gone up. Hurrah, that's great news, is it? Well, these are, this is the average increase in wages. Mm. So some people have got, you know, a large pay rise, particularly some people in the public sector. Mm. Uh, some people have got no pay rise at all. If you're in the gig economy, <laughs> you haven't yeah. got much negotiating power. So... As with all these things, we've got to be mindful of what we call in economics the tyranny of the average. The average may be the average, but people don't live in an average world. They live in their world. They live their lives. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at some of the numbers. Now, you just said, Bev, correctly that wages went up 7.9%. Actually, if you include bonuses, and a lot of public sector people have been getting bonuses as well, not least in the NHS, these one-off pay increases, wages went up 8.2% between April and June. Yeah. Inflation in June was 7.9%. Look at that. So wages, including bonuses, went up more than inflation. So that's the first rise in what we call real wages, wages allowing for inflation since October 2021. Unemployment, meanwhile, has gone up quite a bit, but it's still low by historic standards from 4 to 4.2 per cent. So there is a rise in real wages. If you got... You know, if you include bonuses in the real wage figures, but these are just averages uh, and it's a very, very small rise. So I wouldn't be calling the end to the cost of living crisis just yet. Do we know why the unemployment has gone up? Because we keep hearing there's at least a million positions that need filling. In there, there are. There are still over a million vacancies. And journalists have been saying for you know a long time, oh, we've got more than a million vacancies. The trouble is we've now got just over one million vacancies and vacancies are actually down 20% compared to this time last year. So the labour market has tightened, if you like. Uh, on the other hand, I'd also say, even though there are lots of vacancies, there's lots of mismatches, there's geographic yeah. mismatch. The jobs aren't always where people live. There's what we call occupational mismatch. The jobs available require skills that people often don't have. We've also got you know, upwards of three, maybe four million people, quotes, long-term sick, mm -hmm. the number of which has massively increased since mm -hmm. COVID. So, look, this isn't unemployment like in the late 80s yeah. when we were growing up, you know, one in 10, UB 40, yeah. 3 million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's much, much smaller than that, but it's still going up a bit as the labour market shifts. Mm -hmm. And, Liam, um, you, you no doubt would have seen Mark White's report today, the, the bust on, on illegal working within the delivery driver sector. How much of an issue is that in terms of the, the billions of lost revenue to the exchequer by this kind of subletting out of contracts to people who work illegally? There's always been a sizable, what we call grey economy in the UK, be it the building trade, the you know, hospitality industry. You know, I worked in a lot of kitchens as doing portering as a kid, where you pick up a lot of good mm -hmm. banter. Mm -hmm. And most, you know, in the kitchens I worked in, in various parts of London, lots and lots of people were there illegally, and that was kind of a bad badge of honour. So there's always been this in the UK. Uh, of course, perhaps it's gone up in uh, recent years as we've had an influx of people uh, coming in in small boats and other forms of immigration. There's one other thing I'd say about these wage numbers. While the headline is the first rise in real wages since, you know, 2021, that's true. This, the fact that there is still wage inflation, plus the fact that GDP growth was actually better than expected last week, both those things combined, strap yourself in, make it more likely that the Bank of England will raise interest rates when they meet next on September no. the 20th and September the 21st. And is that because there's more money in people's pockets, there's more money in the economy, therefore we've got to stop people spending, therefore here's some more pain, your mortgage is going up? It's because the people on the Monetary Policy Committee, the nine economists, some of them will say there's still what we call a wage price spiral. That is, wages are going up, that means firms' costs are going up, they pass those costs on to consumers, so consumers demand higher wages in an upward spiral. I think that impact is overdone. I've been calling for rates to be yeah. put on hold since, since April, of course, uh, but I do think the Bank of England will raise interest rates. As things stand at the moment, on, in, when we get to mid-September, a key number is next week, next Wednesday, so, sorry, tomorrow, uh, will be the inflation number. If that inflation number 
is particularly low, if it starts with a 5 or low 6 from 7.9, then the Bank of England may hold. But as things currently stand, I think an interest rate rise is nailed on. What do you think the inflation rate will be tomorrow? So it, was, it went from 8.7 to 7.9 from, June to, uh, from May to June. Mm. I think tomorrow it will be, I think it will start with a 6, mm. and I think it will be something like 6.4 or 6.5. Okay. Uh, but I still think, even though that's a sizable, chunky uh, reduction in inflation, I just don't think the MPC has got the intellectual grit to push back against the consensus and hold interest rates. They're also desperate to try and re-establish some credibility because they were so slow yeah. to get yeah. going with rate rises. But I would say two wrongs don't make a right. So the MPC members should not compound their early errors mm. by driving the UK into a recession mm. with what now I think would be counterproductive rate rises. OK, thank you, Liam.